internet people, can you also see it? Probably yes, okay. So, let me start with uh, uh, two quotations actually, when, which came to my mind when I was trying to define uh, something that would uh, define this uh, Vedic Slavism. And actually a quote by Confucius, the famous philosopher, Chinese philosopher came to my mind. <laughs> uh, by nature, men are all alike, but by practice they get to be wide apart. And that's exactly what defines these groups in, in Slovakia. They draw from the same source, but actually they are very, very different even from each other. So, uh, and the second quotation refers to that uh, when I started my re research, I was trying to form some sort of hypothesis uh, about this phenomenon, but uh, when I first encountered these groups, I realized that uh, I'm boiling out of water. I don't have enough relevant data to form a hypothesis. So I didn't want to end up with something that uh, the famous nuclear physicist Wolfgang Pauli would call, it's so non-factual, it's not even wrong. <laughs> so that's why I decided to do a purely uh, exploratory research from the ground. Okay, so let's move on. Terms. Uh, I guess many of you are, at, to some degree, familiar with this phenomenon, at least uh, in, a, in a brief context. Uh, you may come across various, various terms and names. These groups are known as Slavigarians, Vedas movement, the Inglism, also with Y or I. Uh, actually, both, both are uh, being visible and they haven't agreed which one is the correct one. Also Vedic Slavism or Slavic Vedism, that's basically the same. Uh, I prefer the terms Vedic Slavism or Slavic Vedism, that's, as, as I said, it's the same, or Slavic Aryans, so when I'm referring to these groups. Uh, I don't use the Slavic Aryan Vedas because uh, when I did at the beginning, uh, people get mixed up whether people were confused whether I'm talking about the books or about the groups. So that's why. Slavic Aryans or Slavic Vedists. Uh, as I said, they are ideologically equal, but in practice, very, very different. Uh, the second thing is that they have themselves have problem to define, uh, to find the correct name for themselves. Uh, they are very aware of their reputation among academics or other neo-pagan or contemporary pagan groups. So uh, they uh, don't use the term Vedic because they know that gravitates toward the Indian subcontinent and uh, they don't use the Slavic Aryan Vedas name because uh, they know exactly what that evokes in people. So they still don't have a proper name for themselves. Therefore, any terms that you will see in this presentation are my analytical terms that I established to uh, name these groups and to somehow to cooperate with them and distinguish them from each other. Okay, uh, theoretical concepts. Uh, this will be just a brief mention. I guess you know most of the names because they are very established names in the sociology of religion. Uh, just a quick point. I uh, chose to study this through the contemporary spirituality, through the sociology of religion, because when you try to study these groups, which, for example, the historical method, you won't get very far because basically you will be just deconstructing their beliefs, which is uh, which for me as an ethnologist is unacceptable. Okay, let's move on to the origins. As you know, maybe that, of course, this religion came from Russia to Slovakia. The founder is uh, known as the Yuri Alexandrovich Kinevich, or his name as uh, Pater D, which he uses. Or the Inglist, which is, of course, the name Inglia means the primordial sacred fire, which which created all the forces and all the worlds that we know and even we did we don't don't know. Uh, they basically are a combination of religious and spiritual elements, pre-Christian Slavic religion, which is quite obvious, even Orthodox Christianity, that is not so obvious here in Slovakia. Uh, it's basically visible in Russia, where they call themselves, they try to be established as a church. Also, they combine many oriental elements from mainly Hinduism, they still use the terms like Dharma, Karma, Atman, and so on. Buddhism, for example, the, or Jainism even, the uh, teaching about nonviolence, Ahinsa, is very common. Uh, it maybe sounds like a contradiction, but I will get to that later. Uh, they, also elements which, uh, they also incorporate elements which may be a bit surprising from Judaism. I will also see you to that later. Ancient Egyptian religion, Scandinavian paganism, and esotericism, of course. In mixed with their internal doctrines, 
Vedic linguistics and Vedic mathematics, which uh, are so-called sciences that they use to interpret, uh, to interpret the world as we know it, or as they know it. Uh, you will find traces also of ideologies like communism, fascism, mixed together white supremacy, of course, and anti-Semitism, which, uh, which is a big problem. Because most of these groups, even if they claim not to be racist or anti-Semitic, they mostly are. Okay, so the main sources of this book, uh, this movement, Slavic Vedism, you probably heard of them, Slavic Aryan Vedas. Uh, they are, uh, depends, in, in Russia they were published, I think, four of them. Here in, Slo uh, five, sorry, five. In Slovak translation there were four because they put two, two books together. Uh, the fifth book, that which, among which are mentioned there, the fifth one would be uh, the Inglinga Saga, which is often added to some of these and published as a one. If uh, you have 16 or 20 hours spare reading time, you can read them. You don't have to, I did it for you. I read also the Slovak translation and the Russian original to see if uh, <laughs> there are any differences from the text. Uh, apart this, uh, this uh, publishing issues, uh, there are basically no differences. So it's, you can be sure that you have, if you read the Slovak equivalent, you have the Russian original almost. So uh, I don't know if, whether they are or translated to English, but I think it's only a matter of time before it will be. So uh, I don't want to discuss in detail what these books are about. They are, some of them, uh, okay, just maybe in a brief. Okay, for the Book of Light, for example, it can be called as a Bible of these uh, Slavic Aryans. It uh, deals with the creation of the worlds, battle between the good and evil, the creation of the Jews, of course, which are called the Grey Ones in this book. And, uh, for example, the confirmation of the Book of Light deals with the cosmology of uh, this, this world, how the world was created, and tries to, tries to somehow verify these claims, but uh, uh, as not, not an expert, I won't get into this because that's for historians to do. Okay, okay so finally, let's get to the situation in Slovakia. Uh, you may see that there is the date uh, or the year 2021-22. Uh, why am I talking about this uh, in the specific years? Uh, because this is when I was finishing my research, the situation looked like this. So let's go to the part right part. If you see the, when the Soviet Union collapsed, divided into Russian, uh, Russian Federation and Ukraine. Uh, from Russian Federation, there was uh, the import of the classical Englism to Slovakia. Uh, the, I will get to the group later, uh, just a brief explanation. Uh, this group does not uh, operate in the original form uh, today. It uh, underdid uh, some modification, which is today known as Slavianstvo, anthropocentric Vedic Slavism. Again, I uh, note that uh, this is my term, they don't call themselves like this. I try to name them after their key feature or the basic characteristics. The second group, which uh, was created by a schism or secession, was the Slavianstvo Theocentric Vedic Slavism. Uh, so I will most uh, get to that later. And uh, to, to, to the two small groups that uh, you can see in the bottom of the slide, the Slovian clan school in Turiec region and the group in Lipto region uh, are also uh, divided from, uh, by schism from the Slovian, uh, from the anthropocentric Slavism, but they are heavily influenced by the theocentric group. Theo theocentric group. So this is how it, uh, how it looks like. And why is this? Uh, I will tell you later. Uh, also from the Ukraine, there, all, there also is uh, one minor group, the Živa Yarga, which, uh, as I said, it is the Ukrainian provenience. And uh, I wanted to study them because uh, it is the best approachable group, but uh, it's basically non-existent. And during the pandemic years and restrictions and lockdown, uh, their existence basically came to an end and uh, they are just a group of independent followers now, so uh, maybe later. Okay, anthropocentric group, the main one. It is the most radical group in Slovakia, uh, based on Russophilia, anti-Semitism, uh, white supremacy, 
but they say the physical violence is rejected. Uh, a fun fact here, most of the men were armed with knives during, <laughs> during the uh, seminars, as they, as they call it. Uh, the founder, Ladomir, which is uh, a pen name of the writer and the uh, educator of this group, the head of uh, his uh, civic name is uh, Vladimir Laubert, so he's a public figure. And uh, this is, uh, he came, he was in, in 90s, he underwent a journey to Siberia as an adventurer, and there he came uh, in contact with something like this. He came, be, uh, brought the books back, translated them to Slovak, and thus this started. That was something in 1995, I think. And, but in, in public space, the, this group was more recognizable in the early 2000s. Uh, okay, they are, so they are very esoterical. This, uh, uh, this group is uh, mainly focused on the, uh, the spiritual work. Uh, the main practice is meditation, but which uh, don't, don't imagine it as a, some form of uh, as meditation, as you know, from Hinduism or Buddhism. There are, basically, there are basically no rules how this meditation should be done. And uh, the first one on the seminars you will learn, uh, it's guided by the Vedma, which can be translated as which is, which is a Russian authority, authority uh, which visits occasionally here in Slovakia. And, but basically, the meditation is that you just listen to yourselves and the Vedma sometimes uh, say some sort of mantra or something like that. This meditation can be a cleansing one, you can curse someone with it, you can program other space with it, uh, like for example your house, your street, whatever. So uh, basically this is the only practice that they really do. Uh, meditation is for everything. Okay? So, uh, yeah. The strong influence of Russian gurus, yes. Uh, as I mentioned, the Vedma, the, she was basically on every seminar and still is, but now the, the group of uh, native Slovak Vedmas are being initiated, so that will probably uh, speed up the process with the seminars. Uh, the goal of this group is to, became, to have the golden age of Slavs. Uh, Slavs, uh, please understand them as Russians or as uh, white men can do, so not, not all uh, races can be Slavs, only, of, uh, only the white, white men. Uh, this, this goal should come through the, exactly through the meditation and, uh, and through the magical means. So, uh, this is the, the, the community that's sitting here, that is, that is Ladomir, who is lecturing, and that is actually a lecture that is, was done in Košice, in Eastern Slovakia, and it was uh, on the Sl Slavic writing system, Bukvica, which you can see on the other side of the slide, which is not only a writing system, but it is also a meditation aid. Every letter has its esoteric meaning, and you can basically, you have to have several courses or books to buy if you want to understand it, and you still cannot understand it completely. I have all of them, I uh, underwent all the courses, and I still haven't understand it completely. <laughs> And uh, this is just one of the writing systems, okay? They have several. co Century Group. Okay, this is less radical. This, uh, it was formed as a reaction on radical opinions on the anthropocentrics. Uh, we can say that this is the original group made in Slovakia because it came, it came to existence here, uh, here in Slovakia. Uh, this one is focused on the rituals and the worship of gods. The esoteric line also exists, but it has a more uh, private, private uh, scope. Uh, for example, there is a fire meditation which serves, which heals, can heal cold or flu, or even protect you from flu if you, uh, if you meditate on the sacred fire. So this is, uh, this is a more private line, in this esoteric, esoteric line. Uh, they are also more cooperative and uh, more tolerant. They try to establish relations with uh, not only other Vedic groups, uh, Vedic, Slav Vedic Slavism, but also, for example, they try to cooperate with Jarislav in Slovakia and Paromova Dubrava and many other Slavic groups also, but not also Slavic uh, neo-pagan neo groups. Uh, sometimes on their actions uh, they call uh, other 
esoteric uh, authorities like um, from Shaman from Guatemala, was there once, and others. So, uh, what is important? It is an ethno-religious group, as you can see uh, from the sacred site that's on the uh, Zob Zobor Mountain in the town of Nitra in Western Slovakia, which is considered a sacred place. Uh, the flag basically pointed uh, to the ground in front of the altar. Uh, that the flag represents the deity. So uh, the nationhood or the nationality is inseparable from, from the spirituality in this case. So therefore, if you are not Slovak, Slav, Russian, uh, then you probably cannot be uh, the Vedic Slav. Uh, if you are white, that will do. If you are basically non-Caucasian, that's a problem. The Vedma, on one of the seminars, Vedma uh, specifically stated uh, it is very good to look at this audience because all the faces are Russian, meaning white. If there were, for example, Chinese sitting in here, I wouldn't do this seminar because they have different biostructure, not because I hate them. So, okay, as I stated, the, the minor group, Jiva Yarga, which is basically just uh, a few followers uh, from uh, uh, this, this gentleman on the right, the darker one, this is the founder of the group, Vladimir Kurovsky, he's an esoteric healer, and also uh, he, he's the leader of the seminars, which is focused, uh, which are focused on the celiterstvo, which is a Slavic interpretation of the Reiki healing method, because basically it is the same as if, if you can see these symbols that are drawn on the palms of the head during the seminars, during the initiation. Uh, they don't look like the Reiki symbols, they are, they are let's say, Slavic, but the, their purpose is the same, to give your hands you, you, the energy to heal. So. Uh, also, the yarga is uh, just uh, another word for yoga. They also interpret the uh, yoga asanas uh, as, uh, for example, the, you have the asana called bow. They, they call it the, the street box bow, the god of wind. So, this is what I said, as I said, they are not very, not very active during these days. Okay, let me go, let me go to some, uh, <laughs> some photos that we, uh, what's the time? Okay. Uh, some photos during the research. This is uh, Vedma during the meditation on one of the seminars. Uh, I don't have to mention that the seminars are, of course, uh, paid. It was 80 euros for a weekend seminar. If you have to have the full initiation, you need at least two, but you are invited to repeat them as many times as you want, because, as they say, no seminar is the same. Uh, okay, preparing the ritual site. This is the ignition of the living fire. Uh, no matches, no chemicals can be used. This is from the Theocentric group. As you can see, this is different flag, the Peronica flag. They, uh, they shift the flags during uh, several, several occasions, but uh, basically it is the same. It represents the nation, the connection with the nation and the spirituality. Oh, the living fire, this is just a more detailed one. Uh, as you can see on the, the uh, stone that serves as the altar. Uh, there are some offerings to the sacred fire. Uh, um, alcohol is forbidden as well as uh, human sacrifice and animal sacrifice also. So no blood sacrifice and no alcohol. Uh, the interesting thing is that, uh, I will go back a little. I didn't mention this, this image, which is jumping over the fire, which is an old, of course, you know, old Indo-European custom, as well, as well as the folk custom here in Slovakia, well, not exercised today in many regions, but it was. Uh, they, so they very mix, they mix uh, these traditions with the Vedic ones, because uh, before the, this fire is lit, there is so some incantation set, and they believe that during the fire, the, through the fire, the gods are present in the fire, so the fire serves as a, as a portal to the spiritual dimension, which in a sort of way reminds the, uh, the Vedic ritual we still exercise in India today, the Agnihotra ritual, which is a sacred sacrifice to the fire. Okay, this is more detailed, the living, the writing system, Bukvica. As you can see, I don't know if it's visible, but every letter is explained. Well, not in detail, but sort of. This is the second meditation group led by Vedma. So as you can see, there is no position 
prescribed. Basically, you just have to listen, uh, sit uh, in, uh, for half an hour. And that's uh, during the seminars that lasted, uh, it was, I think, eight hours. There were several of these uh, meditation sections. First for cleansing, then for programming yourself to ascend to the highest level, and so on and so on. Yeah? Two minutes, okay. Uh, okay, so this is just another, this for example, the model of the reality as they understand it, but uh, I will uh, look to focus your attention on the Kolosrot, that is a calendar, they call it. There are runes present, as you can see on them, but these, these are the runes of the festivals of the year, but these runes are, uh, there are 444 runes, with every rune has the 444 meanings, uh, according to them, but uh, these rooms are not yet revealed to the public. The time has not yet come. Okay? Uh, you, I guess you know this. Uh, if you think that it's the tree of life, no, from the Hebrew Kabbalah, no. This is Shislovo, no, as the word number. This is the Hebrew element I was talking about. They incorporate with very, very uh, skillfully. Uh, so, how do, if you ask how is this possible, it is because of two key elements. Uh, the, the element of znanie, which means uh, the Russian word for knowledge, and the element of originality. Uh, the znanie is basically the inspiration from the astral plane, superior even to Vedas, because due to the change of period, the Kali Yuga or the night of Svarok has ended in 2012, now it is the morning of Svarok, so it is a spiritual rejuvenation for Slavs. Uh, it can be the form of recommendations, divination, warnings, uh, it can be individual or collective, often it is a, a conspiracy theory sometimes. And this is exactly the znanie uh, element, is what co is causes the splitting of the groups, because if someone has the feeling that uh, the group is somehow unsatisfactory to him, or is uh, moving away from the original teachings, or not emphasizes something enough, then he can form his own group, because he has the znanie for it, the, the, or the uh, knowledge for it, because it was from the, from the astral plane. The second key element is originality. Uh, this element usually follows the element, uh, follows the element of knowledge, and its purpose is to label any knowledge, teaching, spiritual practice, whatever, as our original, so it can be incorporated into the Slavic, their culture, not Slavic, okay, their culture, or their religion, so basically everything. And also, uh, you can ask, why was this not done earlier? Well, because the znanie has only come now, that's why. As I said, it can be also individual. Uh, uh, for example, I was t talking to one of the follower. I, I use the term follower, but not, not a member, because they don't exercise any membership, regular membership, just followers. So uh, he, was, he had a discussion with the doctor about vaccination of his child, and the doctor argued, him, argued to him that you are vaccinated, your other children are vaccinated, why don't you have the youngest one vaccinated? Uh, well, because this nanya has only come now, that the vaccination is evil. So. Uh, these two important elements have uh, two functions, that is the identity creating, which is, I think, obvious, and the legitimizing. For example, the Chislovo, well, if they adapt it as, a, as a, an element of their own, you cannot argue that it's, in, it's not original, because something like that exists in another system. So that's why it, it is legitimizing, there. Uh, it gives them credit. Conclusion, is this paganism? Well. <laughs> Uh, I would like to, for you to say if it's paganism, but the, uh, what I've seen, the key attractor is Slavism, not the spiritual development, the Slavism uh, is the key attractor that draws people to this. Ethnology, as I said, is inseparable from this movement. Uh, anything can be Slavic due to znanie and originality, as I said. Uh, this group is the product of the following processes, individualization of religion, so they have to find themselves first, detradicionalization and resacralization. And to answer the question in the beginning, the theocentric group, is this paganism? Well, the theocentric group, yes. If you didn't know it draws from the Vedas movement, then it can be a regular neo-pagan group. The others are quite disputable. Uh, they are more towards a new age than paganism. Or they are a new age group that uses Slavic and pagan narratives. The last thing, conclusion in Slovakia, uh, basically the important thing is the final part. 
It's uh, freely forming dynamically existing metaphoric non-church and post-traditional religiosity with divergent view and structural forms currently gravitating around the pro-Russian oriented teaching of the Slavic and Vedas, which is a rather complicated narration. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that you are hoping it will go away, it won't. <laughs> because basically they can incorporate everything to, to themselves and they can attach to everything. So that's why. Yeah. Thank you.